Welcome back to another video where today, of course, you join me at home. A lot of us are at home, a lot of us are indoors, and a lot of us are not going outside, which means there's a lot of types of photography we can't do. We can't do street photography, we can't do landscape, we can't do portrait unless you're using a long lens to keep that social distancing. There's a lot of stuff we can't do, but today, let's talk about five photography projects that you can do in the home, so you don't have to go out, you can do it in your home with what you've got, and it can keep you busy while we're all inside, keep that photography brain nice and sharp for when we can go back out and do all the, all the fun stuff that we like to do. And actually, I've found this is a really nice way to challenge yourself a little bit. As a photographer, this is a nice way to push yourself out of your comfort zone and try something new. So let's talk about five different projects that you can take on while we're all at home. So number one, of course, is food photography. This is probably the most obvious one. Assume you can get food from the supermarkets, which isn't 100% a given these days, but assuming that you have some food, any food will do, whether you wanna do some fruit and veg and stuff like that, or whether you wanna do an actual meal, there's loads of different ways you can take photos of food. I've talked about it a few times in different videos. So we've actually had a video around Christmas. We had a video around sort of pancake day, around taking photos of pancakes, but you can take photos of food in all kinds of different and creative ways. Now we'll do a full video about food photography, of course, but the main parts are this, lighting is key. Now, if you don't have flash or continuous lighting to actually set up and be able to control yourself, you can just position your food near to a window. And to make that point extra clear, I'm actually just using window light right now to light this whole video which actually works really well. Window light works as a really nice diffused light, especially daylight coming through, it just looks great. So if you can set up your food near to a window, you've essentially got a directional light, really soft coming in over your food. Perfect for food photography. Now then of course you wanna think about things like what you're gonna set your food up on top of, so the kind of uh, flat lay. If you're gonna shoot at a different angle, you might wanna have a background, you might wanna think about that. And then of course, just the positioning of the food itself, positioning some other things into the frame to really kind of fill up the frame and really emphasize how good that food looks. That's a great one to get involved in. You don't have to leave the house. You don't even have to leave the kitchen. And normally, there's a little bit of food to eat at the end of it as well, just as a little treat. Now, the second project that you can get involved in while we're all stuck at home is pet photography. Now, of course, this only works if you have a pet, but assuming that you have some kind of fluffy friend, this can be a great way to keep that photography brain going, you know, because we've probably all taken photos of our dogs, our cats, stuff like that before, but maybe it's been outside. Whereas now, you wanna get a picture of them in the home. You know, it doesn't have to be dogs and cats. It could be a hamster, it could be a guinea pig, it could be a lizard, it could be fish. You know, it doesn't have to be one of our fluffy friends. It can be all kinds of pets that we can take photos of. But this is a great way to test out your focusing, your composition. It's kind of a different kind of portrait. And of course, because you can't properly direct them, no matter how well trained they are, you can't fully direct them you can actually get to practice your timing, you know, and being able to take photos in slightly more challenging environments. And of course, having a nice photo of your fluffy friend is a lovely thing to just have. You know, I really, really like it. So that's a great one to try out. You can try different focal lengths, try different kind of apertures. Maybe you want to go for a nice bit of shallow depth of field, or maybe that's actually really tricky. Your lighting is going to be an interesting one as well, because inside you can either set up a light and have your, your pet sit on a chair, maybe or something like that, or you can use window light again. There's loads of different ways that you can approach it. Now, number three is going for some challenging lighting or some low lights. Now, of course, being indoors as the day goes on and it gets a bit darker, it's generally not gonna be super bright and lighting can be an interesting one in your house. Now, there's lots of different ways that you can play around with this. For one, I've been really excited and I know that sounds a bit weird, but I've been really excited to try out a very specific type of photo that I've wanted to get for ages, which is me working at the computer with the lighting, and I wanna just be lit pretty much by the computer screen with some kind of ambient lighting in the background, but that's really what I wanted to go for. And that's a really challenging type of lighting because you're essentially using a very, very small light source, or at least low power light source, it's just a computer screen, to create this kind of lighting effect on the face. 
And it's really quite, really quite difficult to get the right exposure. You know, it's going to be a relatively dark picture, a bit of ambient lighting in the background. But that's really interesting. I like challenging myself and pushing myself in that way to try something completely new. And in this case, obviously, we're talking about challenging lighting. But it doesn't have to be something like a computer screen. You could take, try to take photos in, in different rooms, but only by the ambient light of the room. So, for example, maybe in, in your lounge or your living room, with, a, with just the lamp, just the lamp in the room. You can try different things like that, maybe in the kitchen, but just with the ambient lighting. Not being able to rely on flashes or continuous lights or, or even the diffuse window light that we were talking about earlier can make for a very interesting photo. Now, they're not always gonna come out really well. They might not come out well at all. You know, some lighting is bad. Some lighting is just is bad, but it's an interesting one to try and challenge yourself and push yourself to get a picture. Maybe you could even do something where you try and get a decent photo in every room in the house. That'd be a fun project. That'd be a really fun project. I might try that actually. Next up, the fourth project that you can work on is actually to practice your stock photography. Now this is a great one for when you're stuck inside like this. You can find pretty much any item in your house and just try and get a nice photo, you know, a nice stock photo. Or of course, you could go for a stock kitchen photo, living room photo, office photo, you know, home office, obviously, um, bedroom photo. There's loads of different things you can do with that. You know, maybe you wanna get a nice stock photo of your desk with the computer and some ambient lighting and a plant and stuff like that. It can be a really fun project to work on because you can, you can actually kind of set design different things. So for example, your desk, you might want to, let's pop a plant on there. Let's pop some lights on there so that you get a bit of ambient lighting. What am I going to have on the screen? What do I want to have included in the frame? Is there a lamp in the frame? You know, you can start set designing and then setting up your photo, the exposure and all that kind of thing, the composition. And then of course, the actual edit at the end as well. It can be a really interesting way of doing things. And of course, if you wanted to actually take this a little bit further, you can actually look at stock photo websites go through their guidelines of quite, some of them want quite specific things, and actually work out exactly what you would need to take a good stock photo. And then you can actually go ahead and start doing this. You know, while we're all stuck at home, it's a great way to just get some stuff out, maybe pop it on a stock photo website, see what happens. You know, no harm in doing it. No, uh, no time lost because we're all stuck at home anyway. And then project number five is one that I don't do that often. It's to try working in black and white. Now, we talked a little bit about challenging lighting earlier. Sometimes popping a photo into black and white can actually really help to kind of make it look better, make, make it more dramatic, help with the contrast. You know, maybe it can fix. There's always that old saying that black and white can fix bad lighting. That's not necessarily true, but you know, you can, you can certainly do a lot with black and white. I don't work a lot in black and white just because I like color. I like color a lot, actually, maybe too much. But actually working in black and white can be really interesting. Maybe doing portraits with people at home, just on the sofa, but pop it in black and white. Try and get a certain mood, a certain feel out of those black and white photos. And especially if you don't do this very much, just give it a go, you know, maybe food photography. Maybe, maybe get some food photography, but try some in black and white. You know, any of the other photos we've been talking about, pet photography, low light, you know, even stock photo stuff, just try it all in black and white because doing stuff in black and white can be a really interesting project to try out. And like I say, especially if you're not used to doing it, if you do a lot in color, then black and white, it's a, it's a different feel. It's a different feel and it can be very, very interesting to try out. So those are five projects that you can try right now, over the weekend, over the week, over the many weeks while we're all stuck at home. I'll pop a link to all the products we use for the different photos down in the description so you can go and check them out. Of course, make sure to subscribe if you're not already because we're gonna have loads of new content. Tutorial Tuesday on Tuesdays, of course, for a good old fashioned photography tutorial, but we're also gonna do full videos on every photography project that we've been talking about in this video and probably more. We're all in this together. We're all stuck inside, so let's make the best of it. Let's uh, let's all learn together. Now, any tips that you might have for anything we've gone over in the in the video or anything you want to see, pop it all down in the comments. I love reading through your tips and, and suggestions and all that kind of stuff. So pop it all down there. Any questions, of course, pop it down there as well. Make sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.